Hi, I'm Hannah Absalom. I'm Alex Absalom. And today we're going to talk about fasting. This is something that we've always done to one extent or another, but in the last couple of years it's something that we've really felt the Lord challenge us on and press into a bit more. So we thought we'd look at, first of all, why we need to fast. Okay, so we're going to give you seven uh, reasons. There's obviously lots, but here's the seven that uh, you might find helpful to motivate you in uh, in fasting. Number one would be it's uh, a place that helps you in prayer and worship. And the reason we say this is that we set aside time which we would otherwise spend eating in meals in order to s- devote that time to, to worship and to encountering God and to seeking his face uh, in prayer. Uh, and we recognise in those moments that as we feel physical hunger, uh, what we're doing is we're also saying, Lord, I'm hungry for you to, it, to intervene in my life or to change the situation or to have a greater encounter with you. Uh, so lots of biblical examples of that. One where I've got written down here is in Acts 13, 2, where it says, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit set apart Saul and Barnabas. So that setting apart of Saul, who became Paul, only happened because they were choosing as a community to spend time in fasting so they could pray and worship. Which leads us on to the second thing, which is consecration. So consecration is basically setting ourselves apart um, and almost purifying ourselves and saying almost we don't belong to the flesh. We, you know, we are spiritual um, beings as well. So, um, so, so a, a biblical example of that would be in Acts 14, 23. So Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord. So it's basically a consecration saying, here I am, Lord. I give myself to you. I devote myself to you. Um, take me and use me uh, as you wish. Third one is repentance. And in the Bible, there's a number of examples of people praying and uh, repenting of their sins and behaviours. So an example we have is from Nehemiah chapter 9, where the people of God chose to have a day of repentance and fasting as they sought the Lord's forgiveness for having neglected his law and his way of of behaving. Uh, We've had that experience. Obviously, personally, we've seen it happen also corporately. We've been in corporate times of repentance with churches uh, but just at a personal level, one of the things that might happen is the law might bring stuff to mind which you need to confess and let go of. Uh, the next one is direction. So if you're particularly wanting to know, okay, Lord, what do I do? Or you're wanting a particular breakthrough in an area. Uh, so, for example, in the Old Testament, Queen Esther, she knew she had to go and talk to the king and plead um, him for for her people that they would not be killed and so she got the Jews to pray and to fast so for her she went to the king so for direction and I think by doing the 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 fasting it gives you a greater sensitivity to what the Lord is saying Mm, that's good Uh, number five would be spiritual warfare and the reason we think spiritual warfare comes into fasting is uh, we read for instance Ephesians 6 12 that our battle is not against flesh and blood but against the powers the principalities and the rulers in, in the uh, heavenly places um, uh, so an example of that in the bible might be Ezra 8 where they pray for the Lord's protection against their enemies and the, and the forces that would prevent them from getting to Jerusalem as the exiles return and so this reminds us that um, we can't be casual about our faith or we become a casualty we can't be um, we can't uh, kind of take for granted that we're going to win a spiritual battle there is a spiritual battle it's called a battle because sometimes we lose there is a fight to be had and so there are some situations where we need the heavy lifting to be done uh, by God uh, in the heavenly places and so we fast and we pray and ask him for the breakthrough in that thing the next one is healing and deliverance. So uh, in Mark, um, Mark 9.9, 9, Jesus says, so basically the um, disciples have gone up the hill, um, Jesus has gone up the hill with, with um, John and Peter, and they come down, the disciples are trying to cast out a demon out of a boy, and they can't. And they're saying, Lord, why couldn't we? And, and Jesus says, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Now, presumably, Jesus wasn't telling them that they had to be fasting and praying right then because, obviously, it's a period of time. So 
my assumption is that um, Jesus was saying it's more of a lifestyle, it's a spiritual discipline that you should be doing from time to time. If you're regularly praying and fasting, it almost gives you that spiritual authority so that when you're in a situation where you need to be, it's a bit, bit more of a big hitter, you've got that authority to, to, um, to deal with the situation. And specifically, whenever we are facing something bigger that we know we're, we've got to pray through, so whether it's a, a deliverance setting and it's some big issues we know need mm-hmm. dealing with, or whether it's we're praying for um, you know, some significant healing, then we will often, we will often and we'll get other people to fast before we do it, specifically mm. for that. Okay, and then number seven is you might pray and fast for the lost. And the reason we pray and fast for those who are far from Jesus is we, we desperately want to see them come to saving faith in Christ. Uh, and so we'll, we'll pray and say, Lord, would you open their eyes? Would you uh, open their hearts to you? Would they respond to the message of your gospel? Would they see you alive in us that we would have the chance to share about you? And so by doing that, um, we follow the example that you kind of see as a pattern, say, in the book of Acts where the early church is fasting and praying and often that was around being sent out for mission for their influence in the city where they found themselves to to be living at that time. So I think as the Western church, most of us are very comfortable. Uh, It's something that God's been speaking to me about and I think the idea of fasting, most people, we don't like fasting. No, it's terrible. (laughs) Um, But I think it's, it's... I don't know that God or Jesus specifically commands us to do, although God in some place in the Old Testament says, um, so in Joel 2, he says, come to me with weeping and mourning and fasting, rend your hearts and not your garments. So we are told in the Old Testament to fast. In the New Testament, Jesus doesn't specifically say it, but he says when you fast. So there is an implication that we are fasting from time to time. So I think it should be part of what we're doing, Mm. but I think you don't want to just do it out of duty. I think you do it out of relationship. So, okay, what is the Lord telling you to do in this season? Is he saying you're okay? Or is he saying, I want you to do, say, every lunchtime, Mm. once a week, every lunchtime, every Wednesday lunchtime or something? Or um, what is the Lord telling you to do? Well, let's talk about some of the different types of fast. Yes. Okay, so why don't you tell us what some of the different ways we can fast are? So, so you can do a major fast, which is um, 24 hours or more. Um, you can do a minor fast, which is less than 24 hours. So it might be sun up to sun down, sun down, or it might be just one meal or two meals. It might be more like a Daniel fast, which is when, so Daniel in the Old Testament, if you read that, he denied the choice food that the king gave him and he just had a simple Um, diet of vegetables Um, it could be something like giving up uh, alcohol or desserts or something like that Uh, or it could be more of a soul fast where you're choosing to fast from social media or from tv or from some other distraction that takes you away from the lord so it's um uh so yeah it's knowing what the different types are um yeah okay I think what you're doing is, if you're thinking, well, what do I fast? Then our response would be, go and ask the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if you're, if you're starting out, just pick something that's a stretch, but is also realistic and is achievable for you. So if you've never fasted in your life, to claim you're suddenly going to go the next seven days and not eat anything is probably going to lead to failure. Much better to say, I'm going to fast the next, you know, I'm going to fast four hours. Okay, so all of us can do that. That's not difficult. So do that. Take some extra time to pray. Awesome. Maybe then you go, okay, I did that. That was great. Perhaps then you fast lunch one day or you fast breakfast one day. Um, And you're not doing it because you want to lose weight to get into the summer beach gear. Uh, But instead you're doing it because you want to give some extra time to the Lord to have greater devotion to him. And so I think you go from there. And you might find the Lord puts a specific thing on your heart that you need to lay down for a period of time. But in a sense, it's a laying down in order to take up something often. So you're laying down these distractions or this, um, the control our bodies have over us. And instead, you're taking up uh, extra time with Jesus. You're taking on deeper devotional and prayer life. You're, you're taking on, Lord, would you please um, increase my spiritual authority? Would you please bring breakthrough in that area? And you're pursuing him for those things. And something we found is, uh, I think, 
fasting should be something that's quite joyful and can actually be quite fun in a kind of warped, weird way. Um, in other words, it doesn't all have to be gloomy and, and sackcloth and ashes. And obviously Jesus warns us not to do that. Uh, and instead it's more this sense of uh, that the joy we have in encountering God uh, in that place and that, okay, we're, we're making a bit of a sacrifice, but it, it's well worth it because we do want to encounter the Lord uh, more deeply. So in terms of practically what it looks like, um, you know, so if, if we're fasting, say, one day or just a, a couple of meals or whatever it is, so we will have our quiet time as normal, but then instead of that meal, instead of thinking, oh gosh, you know, um, my tummy's rumbling or whatever, we'll have some extra time in, in worship, in prayer, in reading the Bible, uh, in, in seeking God about so it's good to have in mind why you are fasting. So is it because you're um, experiencing more spiritual warfare or is it because you want breakthrough in a certain area? So that's what you're going to be focusing on mm. rather than just, oh, I'm fasting. Yeah, because the goal is not the fast. The goal is, um, the fast is a means to an end. It's not the end. So that, so it's being clear about what you're fasting about. And is it just more of Jesus in your life? Is it like Hannah said a specific thing? Go back to our list of seven things at the beginning. And if you're locked onto that, that will help you get uh, perseverance and focus for your time. Is there any practical tips? No, I think I'll just wrap up by saying uh, it's not a legalistic thing. Uh, if you f end up forgetting and you have a snack at work, it's fine. Just like, sorry, Lord, carry on. Um, uh, it's, but at the same time, I think it's something most of us need to experiment with a bit more, try a bit, try a bit, uh, bit more regularly as part of the rhythm of our living um, you're not going to necessarily have a linear outcome like I fasted this meal and then I saw this direct outcome. It doesn't always work like that. In fact, it often doesn't work like that. But it's more about a, a residual impact in your life uh, or in the ministry that you're called into. And um, I think it does increase your spiritual authority and your spiritual oomph and clout as you go forward with Jesus. So I think the, the key is basically to be asking the Lord, okay, what, what do you want me to do, firstly? What's it practically going to look like? But secondly, it's, uh, Lord, what do you want to teach me in this moment? Mm. What are you speaking to me about? And maybe journal as you go. That's good. Write down some, maybe even some questions that you have, have that you want to ask the Lord and then write down the responses that you get in return. Mm. So your homework is, pretty obviously now, homework is going to be... Uh, what sort of fast can you take on? So uh, ask the Lord and maybe uh, plan to do that imminently. Uh, so depending when you're watching this, you can work out exactly when that needs to be. But don't like make it four months away. Something, say, in the next couple of weeks, when could you set aside some time? Uh, something that's a stretch but is also realistic that you're going to have a good chance of, of succeeding in. Um, and you might do it to see, just by yourself. It might be you and your household do it, or maybe you and an accountability partner do it, something like that, uh, and, and see what happens. So we would love to hear more from you. Uh, so uh, jump down to the comment section in our blog. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, just hop over to our website, dandelionresourcing.com, and go to the blog section there. And uh, we'd just love to hear your comments. Mm -hmm. if Stories, you experiences, questions. Yep, we'll be on there. We'll respond to any questions if you've got any just tips or mm -hmm. ideas and hopefully this is useful for you.